Action. Boki. Boki, it's... Oh my gosh, Boki, wake up. here from Gigi's Fabric Shop and Cheeky Junkies and now that I am super awake and ready to do this video I just need to like a little bit like stretch out some of my sleepiness that I still have inside of me but this is the video that we uh teased you guys with in the last F600 video kind of like the get to know me overview of that machine this machine is gonna this video is gonna cover the basics so we're gonna talk about how to thread this machine uh, the do's and the don'ts in that department we're gonna show you guys the needle threader we're gonna show you guys the bobbin winding so just basically how to set up your F600 and just make sure you're doing the doing it the correct way because maybe you're having some issues and you didn't even know because maybe you you're putting the bobbin in backwards who knows so this is going to be a video for that all right uh make sure you guys subscribe to our videos we do post weekly uh so you guys want to make sure that you are getting you know you are up to speed with all of our tips and tricks so make sure you guys uh, subscribe you can actually do that while you're watching this video you just do it down at the bottom and yeah let's just jump into how to throw this machine so we're going to start off by grabbing our spool of thread i of course i'm working with the glide 40 which is a 100 percent 40 weight polyester thread this thread has a beautiful shine to it as you can see here this is in the color linen gorgeous this is my personal favorite off-white that we have in the collection so you're going to grab your spool of thread and you're going to slide it you're going to pull this little guy up and put your spool of thread there make sure that the thread is feeding feeding from underneath that it's coming off like this okay you get three different size spool caps with this machine you want to make sure you're using as close to the size of your spool so this little guy the smallest spool cap is going to be as close as possible to this one so i actually like putting it in this way because it holds it in nicely kind of holds it like rotisserie chicken style keeps it nice in place I'm gonna grab my thread kind of like I'm getting ready to floss the machine but before we do that I'm gonna make sure I put my presser foot down and I'm gonna do a quick little needle up and needle down let me show you right here I'm gonna do a one two it's gonna put that needle in the highest position in the set position so that the needle threader can go through that eye and that we are able to thread it, okay? So I'm gonna grab my thread like I'm flossing my teeth, making sure I'm getting in all of those tension discs. Uh, up here, there's like a little cheat sheet for you basically. Uh, the solid line is for threading and the dash line is for bobbin winding and I will demonstrate bobbin winding for you as well, so don't worry. Uh, we're gonna start off by going underneath this arm right here, just like this wrapping around for two okay in for three two tension discs up here so it's very important we're gonna go down for three wrap back up we're gonna go from the left to the right or i'm sorry from the right to the left for four it's gonna click right in there okay it's like a little hook we're gonna go down to five, get a little eye level. There is a thread guide right here on top of the needle. It's very important to get that because if you aren't in number six right here, you will see tension issues. And then number seven is your little crab claw, which um, that little guy just sits right here into this little slit. Let me show you. We're gonna take it right here. And there's a thread cutter on the side right here. We're just gonna come from back to front. It's gonna trim it for you kind of doing this in an awkward angle so bear with me there we go and then your last step is this little lever right here this controls your needle threader so we're just going to go down press make sure it's hugging all the way around the needle and let go and notice how i didn't jerk it i didn't do it very hard i didn't do it very fast i did it nice and swiftly and smoothly i'm gonna do it one more time just so you guys saw exactly how i did that okay so you guys understand that you don't have to be aggressive with it and that all it takes is one little simple push, just like that. And you see that? It has a little loop there for you. Okay, you're just gonna pull the loop through and your eye is threaded. A little tip for you guys in this uh, region is going to be, you cannot use a needle smaller than a 12. It's not going to thread it. And even a 12, you have to be careful because if you're working with very thick thread, like if you're working uh, with maybe a 40 will go through as successfully because it is a little bit thicker. A 50 will probably have no problem, but you just have to be mindful. You can't use the needle threader with a 7511. It's just not, it, the eye is too small. So it has to be an 8012 above and you do 
do have to be conscious of what thickness of thread you're using. So that way that there's actually clearance for the needle threader to push it through, okay? Let's do that needle threading or the whole threading process one more time. One more time a little faster. Without the instructions, but sure. just a, a better camera angle because it was very hard to get that. Perfect. I'm gonna trim this and you always pull the thread from underneath. Be mindful when you're pulling this, when the presser foot's down, you see how tight that is? If I lift this, it releases like the butter, it releases the tension, exactly. So we're just gonna put our down, up and down. So Grab she just put the press her foot down, put the needle up and down so it's in the right position. She's grabbing her thread, putting the cap on, making sure the thread's coming this way off the bottom of the spool. Nice going and tight. From right to left. Down. Around that, around that. Three. From right to left for four. So back from down. that side to that side. Back down. There's six, right there. Through that right. little guide. Grab claw is next, right in that little slit. And then we're gonna get right around here. So she's just cutting her thread when she's on that. She's going through the crab claw, coming through here, cutting the thread, and then she's pushing this down all the way, like that, and it's threading her needle. Just super, like so. super easy. And then you just pull the little loop, like that. And then we're ready to go. And there's even guides on here to show you kind exactly. of the direction of your thread. All the little cheats. And now we're going to do our bobbin winding. So I'm just going to trim this and then I will show you guys how to wind right. it. So now we're going to focus on our bobbin winding. Let me get this little excess thread out of here. All right. So same thing. We have the, the spool of thread on there with the appropriate size spool cap. The thread is feeding from the bottom. And now we're just going to start. We're going to grab our thread nice and tight and go under that arm, just like we did when we were threading the machine. So we're just going to wrap around. Okay. And if you come from this angle, David, you can maybe kind of see what's going on here. It's tucking into this little position right here. It's tucking all the way in behind this little metal plate. Okay. So now we're going to take the thread. Okay, and I'm going to tuck it underneath this little like bar. bar. And then we're taking the thread all the way back and around to wrap inside of this tension disc. Okay, because it needs to be, you see on this picture, you're coming from the right back around and into this tension disc. So you have to make sure it's in. So I like to kind of like tug it like this to make sure that I'm in, okay? Make sure it's tucked in because if it's not in here, this is what's giving the, the bobbin tension. If it's not tucked in here, you will get a smushy bobbin, all right? So now I'm gonna grab a empty bobbin, make sure it's appropriate one. I talked about in the last video how there is ones when you turn them to the side, they do cave up and those are not appropriate uh, bobbins for these machines. Just because it's plastic doesn't mean they're all the same. You have to make sure that they are the right ones. Oh, look, my little, good little learning opportunity for you guys. It came out of that little arm. So like this has to be like this. You see, it came out, it popped out of this arm. Again, this is providing tension. This is providing tension. That is super important that you um, understand that you have to be in this screw, okay? Now we're gonna grab the bobbin, all right? There's two ways of doing this, okay? You can do, you can drop this here and you can do the wraparound method, which I find very inconsistent and I don't like the way my bobbins turn out. Or the foolproof way for me is grabbing it from underneath, going through the uh, little hole. Let me find the hole. There we go. Going through underneath just like that and then holding it nice and tight. This machine does have an independent bobbin winder. So when you are winding the bobbin, you it has its own mechanism that's going. So all you have to do is engage it and it starts. Once it grabs a little bit of a grip, I can just stop it, cut really close, and have it keep going. And when it's full, it will declutch, okay? I'm not gonna wind this whole bobbin, but I am gonna show you a perfect example of a properly wound bobbin. She's just going through that top hole on the top. Exactly. Trimming this, and you see how evenly this is fed onto the bobbin. It's nice and even all the way across. It's not looping, it's not squishy, it's nice and even. And what I mean by squishy is, let me show you the full one that I have in the machine, okay? So I call this the squish test. We're gonna grab our bobbin, and if I can grab it with my fingers and pinch it, and it's nice and hard, and it's not moving and squishy like a, like a sponge, 
then this is a perfectly wound bobbin and you're not gonna have tension issues. If you get a squishy bobbin, it's because it probably came out of here or it came out of here. Maybe you missed a step, maybe it popped out of place, but that's what's gonna cause an inconsistent bobbin, okay? And when you pull it through like I had instead of doing the wraparound method, I find it to be a perfectly round bobbin really to the end. Although we recommend not really using your bobbins all the way to the very end because the tension doesn't stay consistent for the last little, you know, last little spins around. So now let me show you how to insert your bobbins into the case. Just a reminder, you guys, if you are ready to buy a new machine, you definitely need to check out jukijunkies.com. We have this machine, the beautiful F600, and we have all of our other Juki machines on our website, including some industrials, which is pretty cool. So make sure you guys go check out jukijunkies.com. If you are ready to purchase, you can do it really easy right on the website. But if you have any questions or concerns and you wanna ask us to make sure you're getting the right machine for you, uh, our contact information is here, our phone number, our email. Do not hesitate to call because we really do pride ourselves in our customer service. And we just wanna make sure you're getting the right machine for you. And we're here to help in that decision making of course so do not hesitate to give us a call and we'll help all right so here is my perfectly wound bobbin okay and when you're putting in the bobbin into the bobbin case you want to make sure that the thread is falling from the left side so it's making a p-shaped not a q shape okay and this may sound silly but it is very important that you're putting this in properly because you won't believe the little inconsistent stitching that it's gonna do and it's just gonna act all kinds of crazy and funny on you might not do it all the time but it will do it from from occasion okay so we're grabbing Grabbing our bobbin and we're just dropping it in when you have it in the right position and that thread's falling from the left side it naturally almost goes into that little slit and by that little slit I'm referring to right here let me grab my scissors right there okay so it just naturally goes in that's step number one okay number two is going around and wrapping around this gray piece coming back down for three Okay, and then right here, there is a little knife and it just goes slice and it's nice and tucked in for you. Nothing crazy to, to do from here. You just cover it and you're ready to go. You don't even have to pull the thread up. You don't have to do anything. It's just that simple. All right, guys. So we've basically set you up for success here. We've set up the machine. We've learned how to properly thread it, how to properly use our needle threader, how to wind a bobbin successfully, no smushy bobbins around here, how to put that bobbin in properly. So you basically set yourself up for success here. A couple little things I wanted to mention briefly uh, was something I get asked a lot is, do I have to oil this machine and do I have to play with the tension on this machine? So back here, you'll notice that there's a little screw, like it's like a little ridge, not screw, a little dial. It's like rigid. Okay. It's like a gray and there's a number five here. This is your presser foot pressure. Definitely take some time to learn over presser foot pressure and in your manual. Number five is like your base, like the foundation you want to start at, uh, but you can alleviate or apply more pressure depending on what projects you're working on and what kind of sewer you are. So that is located on the back side of the machine. Now, when you open this up, you'll see right here, this is your tension, okay? Auto, you'll notice, is three spots. On this machine, you really, really do not have to play with tension. Now, if you're working from a 50 to a 40 weight or a 40 weight to a 60 weight, you may have to play within these three areas of auto tension just because you're working with thicker, thinner, you know, whatever the case may be. But really, you shouldn't have to work out of auto unless you're working with very, very specialty kinds of threads, okay? But auto is a really happy place. Now, if all of a sudden your machine is looking terrible and your stitches are looking bad and you haven't gotten your machine serviced in over a year, um, it might be time to get it cleaned because you will be surprised at what a simple cleaning can fix. It fixes 99% of the problems that I ever get coming through the shop with my stitches are inconsistent, she's kind of loud, and that brings me to oiling. So as far as the oiling goes, you do not have to oil this machine. Now, if you're somebody who is sewing almost every day on this machine, I would recommend maybe placing one single drop of oil and I'll show you exactly where that is. Uh, you can just take this bobbin out and right here, right here in the middle of this case, you can put one single drop of oil, but I would also recommend taking this case out. We might do another video on that. I really should go in detail. Um, 
on that for you just to show you guys exactly where to oil it on this machine but it only takes one single drop of oil every like six months or so um if you're sewing every day now if you're not sewing every day you do not have to oil this machine this is a low maintenance machine you do not have to oil it yourself all you have to do is clean it after your projects and possibly take it out for a professional cleaning every year or so so thank you guys so much for watching um we'll probably do some more videos on this f600 doing some walkthroughs and things like that make sure you check out our other videos like subscribe comment what machine you're working on or what machine you want to see next or any questions that you may possibly have uh, we do like to post videos every week for you guys uh, david's gonna put up our little info card here we're gonna drop our email and phone number where you can reach us with any questions or concerns you may have about maybe purchasing a new machine um, or send us an email with anything uh, if you want to shop our fabrics we do have a Gigi's fabric shop app that is free available for apple and android uh, and that's where we do our live shows and tutorials and share all of our new fabric so all that good information will be down in the description below but thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next week thanks bye